opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I promise I've turned my cell phone off. Um, good morning, and I, I do want to thank Ranking Member Johnson and the Chairman Smith for co-sponsoring H.R. 4084, the Nuclear Energy Innovation Capabilities Act, and for their leadership in uh, gathering support for nuclear energy R&D. It is indeed an honor to work with fellow Texans to guide research that will keep America safe, globally competitive, and support innovation in our economy. I also want to thank the other Science Committee members who have co-sponsored this bill and encourage others who haven't yet to support this important legislation. The Science Committee has spent over a year examining U.S. nuclear energy policy in preparation for this legislation. The Energy Subcommittee that I chair has held hearings on supercomputing, advanced nuclear energy technology, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, and the DOE Energy Innovation Hubs. Witnesses from the national labs, universities, and the private sectors have all testified in support of various reforms and policy outlined in this bill. By taking our time and working together and listening to all the relevant stakeholders, we have been able to develop that bipartisan bill with extensive support, and again, we thank the other members who have joined into this effort. I would like to introduce, Mr. Chairman, the following 11 support letters into the record from the American Nuclear Society, the U.S. Nuclear Infrastructure Council, the Bipartisan Policy Center, Texas A&M, University of Michigan, University of Wisconsin, MIT, General Atomics, the John Hines Professor of Management at the Harvard Business School, Joe Lasseter, and Dr. Burton Richter, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1976. We don't have to. Okay. Without objection, so ordered. This legislation provides important policy direction for the DOE Office of Nuclear Energy. First, we provide the DOE with statutory direction to leverage its supercomputing infrastructure for modeling and simulation capabilities to develop advanced fission and fusion, Mr. Grayson, reactors. Second, the bill lays out a clear timeline and statutory guidance for DOE to complete a research reactor that will allow for materials and fuels R&D to take place in the United States. Currently, this type of research, which requires access to fast neutron, unfortunately, is only accessible for civilian use in Russia. And while modeling and simulation can uh, accelerate R&D, this research must ultimately be validated through a physical source. The versatile neutron source under Section 6 of H.R. 4084 will enable this vital research. Third, and perhaps uh, as, at least as important, if not the most important, is this legislation provides DOE with statutory direction to use its authority to enable the national labs to partner with the private sector to construct and operate reactor prototypes at DOE sites and to leverage that expertise from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in the process. Because nuclear reactors are expensive and highly regulated, designing a first-of-a-kind reactor requires a blend of creative freedom from engineers testing new designs, but also assurance through of safety throughout that process. DOE sites Particularly, the DOE National Labs can provide a unique environment that safety allows for this kind of creative testing and development for advanced nuclear technology. America must re maintain our R&D capabilities and you continue to develop that cutting-edge nuclear technology right here at home. Without the prioritization outlined in this bill, we will lose the ability to develop an innovative nuclear technology and be left importing reactor designs from overseas. Right now, we have the best nuclear and engineers and manufacturing capacity in the world. America's export economy is a key to our global strength, and this bill will provide a long-term plan to ensure that we do not lose our talent. Even more importantly, this bill will maintain America's capability to influence security and proliferation standards around the world as more developing nations explore nuclear energy. As a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee, I am constantly reminded of the need for American leadership in a dangerous world. 
H.R. 4084 makes it clear that the United States is committed to advancing this critical area of technology. With that, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Uh, thank you, Mr. Weber. Also, with that objection, the